Hey guys, Aaron here again. I am back in the office today and I wanted to do a little overview of the cooling system of the Porsche Boxster. I was curious myself and I was looking online to find out some information about this and I found out that there is really very little information out there. So I figured, hey, why not try to pull some of this information together and make a helpful video? So all the information that's in this video, I've gathered from other resources. I don't really have a way to fact check this. So if you guys come across something you don't think is correct, please put it in in the comments below because I definitely don't want to be giving out misinformation but I have found what I think are some really useful diagrams so let me show you those and we will talk through how the Boxster cools the engine. So of course on my channel I have several DIY videos on how to do some of this maintenance on your car and I'll try to put up some little links to things throughout this video but I'll also put links to those videos in the description of this video. So I hope this video will be a big help to some of you guys. Please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and we'll start out in the garage. All right, you guys ready? Let's dive in. Our journey will begin at the back of the vehicle. I wanna start by talking about this expansion tank. When you start interacting with your car's cooling system, this is where you start usually. It is obviously the easiest access point. It's where you add coolant. It's where you can check the coolant level. So I'm gonna to try to give you some details about your expansion tank. First, the caps are well labeled. This is where your oil goes. Hopefully you know this, you've done an oil change. This is the oil dipstick where you can check the level of your oil along with the computerized reading that comes up on your dash. And this is your coolant tank cap. So down at the bottom is where you read the level on here. If you zoom in, you can see that there is a max and a min, and that is where your coolant should be. So it's a good thing I'm making this video right now because mine is actually below the minimum. If you have not replaced your expansion tank recently, it's probably not this white and it's very yellow looking, but if you take a light and shine it in the top, it makes it a lot easier to see where that is. You can see my pink Porsche coolant is down there, so I need to add some more. But let's talk about the purpose of this expansion tank. It is one part of a complex overall car cooling system that is designed to keep the engine at exactly the right temperature. The cooling system in your Boxster is considered a sealed system, just like most modern cars. The expansion tank on these sealed systems, as you just saw in mine, is partially filled with air. Now this air in the expansion tank provides a cushioning effect to allow the coolant when it is heated to expand. But not just expand, expand without causing it to fail, aka break and cost you a lot of money. When the coolant heats up, it expands, therefore pressurizing the system. If that air was not there, the system would become overpressurized. So this max line is there for a reason. If you overfill the tank above the full line, the coolant has nowhere else to go when it's pressurized, so it will discharge from the weakest point of the system, which is often this cap, if you're lucky, and coolant is just gonna come out of here, but whatever that weakest point is, it will fail. So speaking of this cap, there are a couple things of note. One, there is this little warning symbol on here and it looks like there's some kind of cloud around it. What this is trying to warn you about is that your system is under pressure and not to remove this cap if it is hot. Hot coolant or steam could escape and burn you. The second thing about this cap is the last two numbers on it. Make sure you check yours. Mine ends in 0.04. That is the newest version of this cap. If you do not have a 0.04, I suggest you buy one and replace it because older versions are a known weakness of this vehicle and it will probably leak. So if you remember back in science class, air is much easier to compress than liquid is. So as the liquid heats up and expands, it compresses that excess air. And the air is at the highest point of your cooling system. So your engine is down here below that and your radiators, I don't know if you know this yet, but they are actually way down here in the front of the car at the bottom. So the reason that that excess air is at the highest point of the cooling system is to prevent that air from getting into the system, which would cause the system to be much less efficient at doing its job of cooling. The expansion tank allows home mechanics like us an easy visual way to keep an eye on the cooling system of our Boxsters. So if I look into here, I can check on the condition of the coolant. My coolant is very clean, but since it's low, that means one of two things. Either there is a leak in my system somewhere, or there was air in my system, and that air has been replaced 
with coolant and that coolant came out of here. So this coolant definitely needs to be topped off. Auto manufacturers like Porsche create hundreds of thousands of these reservoir tanks to fit across their fleet. Given the extremely thin profit margin on new vehicles, they have to keep the cost of rolling these things off of their assembly lines as cheap as possible. And that translates into producing these things out of plastic. Now the materials they use are typically rated to withstand the hundreds of heating and cooling cycles that your vehicle is going to see, but frequently they're not in it for the long haul. So the next maintenance item that you can check on and take care of are the rubber hoses that are connected throughout the system. In order to see those, you have to go under the car, and at this point I'm going to pull out some diagrams to help us see what's going on. All right, here is the best diagram that I could find online that I just wanted to walk through. And now there are still a couple things on here that I do not understand. So if you have additional information, please help the community and put it in the comments below. So I will start with one of the things I do not know. So number nine here is the expansion tank that we were just talking about. And right next to it, number 10 is a shutoff valve. So I understand that this is going to shut off the circulation going into the expansion tank and coming out of it. What I don't know is what causes it to shut off, when, and how, how exactly that works. So let me just start with a general overview of everything you're seeing here. These are the six cylinders of your flat six engine that need to be cooled off so your engine does not overheat. Now the way it does it is all of these arrows are the flow of direction of coolant as it goes through your vehicle. Now at the highest level, your water pump here, number one, is a impeller that spins around and pushes the coolant through the system. So the way it usually goes through is through the engine, and then it gets pushed up here to your radiators. This is radiator one and two up here. And as it passes through these radiators, the air flow comes through, cools off that hot coolant, and the cooler coolant returns through this way. So it is just a cycle that goes like this, gets hot from the engine, cooled off from the radiators, hot from the engine, cooled off from the radiators. So overall, it's fairly simple, but there are lots of components to it. Like I said at the beginning, this expansion tank is only one of the many components. So number one here, like I mentioned, is your water pump that is pushing the fluid through. Number two here is your crankcase. So your engine, the little channels go through all of your cylinders here to pick up the heat that your engine is generating. So I'm going to start trying to color some of these paths to make it more intuitive. So we're going to start with blue. This is the already cooled coolant that is coming in here. Now, as it passes through your engine, it gets hot. So it is coming out of here. And this is connected over here, more hot. So for your banks one, two, and three, it gets split here. Some of it comes back this way, and some of it goes this way to item number five, which is your heat exchanger. So you may have heard of this thing before. It is what makes the heat in your car work. So the hot coolant is coming through here and heating this up. So the air from your vents are passing through that, picking up some of the heat and coming into your cabin. And that hot coolant continues all the way back. And your cold coolant continues down here and comes through number six. Number six is your oil to water heat exchanger. That comes back into here to join the, oops, sorry, comes out of here hot and joins back up over here. Now these big channels are your main stream. So after it gets heated up by the engine, this is your main hoses. They're gonna come all the way up to the front of the car. And this is gonna go in two directions. Your hot coolant is gonna go to both radiators. So you have two radiators that are cooling this off. Now as they go through the radiators here, towards the front. All that air coming through is cooling these off now. So cold coolant, 
hopefully, as long as your radiators are working. And there are also fans there that help blow air through your radiators. So if your car is not moving, air is still flowing through. And this cold coolant travels all the way back here until it gets to this block. Now this block is your thermostat. So as you probably know, a thermostat is controlled by temperature. There is a mechanical piece inside here that remains closed until it reaches a certain temperature. Once that temperature is reached, it will open and allow this cold coolant to come back through and get pushed and recycled from the water pump. So why would you have a thermostat? Why wouldn't you just leave this open and let it run all of the time? Well, the reason for that is when you start your car, all of this coolant is cold, but you don't want it cold. An engine gets hot and an engine needs to warm up because if it never did, then the oil circulating around there to lubricate your engine would never heat up to the right temperature that it needs to be at to lubricate the engine correctly. So this thermostat will stay closed and it will allow this hot coolant to come through here, bypass it, and come back in so that your coolant is continually warming up until it gets hot enough to make the system work properly. So this diagram also explains why your heat is not hot right when you start the car because this coolant has not been heated up enough to have any effect with the air blowing over it. Now there are two more components down here, number seven and eight, which are only here if you have a Tiptronic. I have a manual, so these parts do not exist in my car. But if you do have the Tiptronic transmission, number seven is the ATF heat exchanger. So the automatic transmission fluid heat exchanger. So that is how your automatic transmission fluid gets cooled. And number eight here is an electric shutoff valve. I assume similar to the one by the expansion tank so that it only opens up to circulate the coolant once it is warm enough so that your automatic transmission fluid can reach operating temperature. Okay, now time for some actual pictures. That's a little easier than diagrams usually if you're gonna be down there actually working on this stuff. So this is a picture from the 101 Projects book. Uh, if you don't have it, I highly recommend it. This is the first error that I've actually found in the book though. So it is a good diagram of underneath your car and it shows this green arrow here. So this hose is actually the hot coolant that is coming out of your engine and it's going forward all the way to those front radiators and this orange arrow here is actually your thermostat so this is the return line of the cold coolant coming back to the thermostat here and these red and purple arrows are the heater core supply and return line so they're the ones going out to the heater core and back and it shows that this white arrow here points to the radiator vent hose. So if you're under the car and looking at this, hopefully this will help orient you to what is going on. Oh, and finally, this yellow arrow actually points to the coolant drain plug, which I had never used before. When I drained my coolant, it was because I was replacing the thermostat and I just had everything disconnected so all the coolant came out. But if you're not doing that, that is your coolant drain plug. So that's it. Hope you guys found this helpful. Again, please subscribe to the channel and I'll see you with more Boxster content next time.